I'm Ken Roga. I'm a professor of economics at Harvard University, former chief economist at the International Monetary Fund, and my most recent book is The Curse of Cash. I've been writing on the topic of paper currency for some two decades, and when I first started looking into it, what sort of shocked me is how much there was floating around, how much of it was in large denomination notes, the $100 bill that no one sees, and how that's fairly universal. You look at any currency of the advanced economies, more or less, uh, it looks that way. A lot of it probably had to do with tax evasion and crime, just as you think in sort of popular culture. And it's funny because the Federal Reserve at the time had done these very sophisticated studies and reached, I think, a wrong conclusion that all the $100 bills were held abroad. And my basic observation was, hey, wait a second, you're telling me the U.S. doesn't have any criminal activity or tax evasion. My book is about how we use cash, the history of cash. You know, it costs nothing to print currency, and we make a lot of money off it. It's 12 cents to print a $100 bill, and they can sell it for $100, basically. Why would we want to give this up? Sure, you're making money on printing money, but you're making it much easier to do tax evasion, which is 10 times as much, 20 times as much as you're making on paper currency. If you could cut back tax evasion just 5 or 10 percent, and there's a lot of evidence that it might well do that, I would probably get rid of the 50 and the 100 at the same time. Uh, the problems, you don't want to necessarily do this overnight because it creates all sorts of chaos. So the case of India is really quite remarkable. The same day that the U.S. was electing Donald Trump, uh, Prime Minister Modi gets on Indian television and says, you know, the, our two biggest bills, the 500 rupee, 1,000 rupee note, in four hours at the strike of midnight, they're no longer legal tender. I'll let you turn them in for smaller bills. You have it till the end of the year. The Europeans finally got rid of, or getting rid of the 500 euro note. Uh, there was uh, some thought that the terrorists and the Paris bombings had used 500 euro notes. And even though they'd been talking about it forever, they had been thinking about it, that just ended discussion. They got rid of them. And you may see that elsewhere. If we have a terrorist incident in the United States and they were using cash, uh, it will absolutely change the discussion. But I don't think we'll ever completely replace paper currency. Uh, it's very important to emphasize my book argues for a less cash society, not a cashless society. Um, I think we need to have physical currency around forever for reasons of privacy, robustness. It won't always be paper. It may someday be something else, but um, I, I think we need a physical currency. There are people who want to, you know, buy marijuana, uh, which we should legalize. Uh, there are people who want to use hookers. There are people who want to do things their spouse doesn't know about. But you don't need the $100 bills necessarily. That's for wholesale transactions, large criminal operations, people stashing very large amounts of money away they want to hide. $100,000 in $10 bills, you still can fit in a briefcase. In 20 years, if you're doing a transaction over $10 or $20, uh, it'll be very small. It's already the case for transactions of $50 and $100. Cash is fifth behind debit cards, credit cards, checks, electronic transfers. It's really only important in very small transactions. And as we reach that point, it'll become so clear when you bring a $100 bill in to pay at the store that it came from somewhere it shouldn't.